We're going to take a look at bipolar junction transistors, or BJTs, and look at how to use them in circuits. Um, so here's an assortment of bipolar junction transistors, and here's a big brother for those. So let's take a look at how you use these as a switch. So when we use these in switching circuits, we use what's called a common emitter configuration. And the reason we call it a common emitter configuration is because our input is applied between the base and the emitter and our output is obtained between the emitter and V plus or the collector. So the emitter is common to both the input and the output. So this is why we call this a common emitter. Now what we're going to do is use the transistor to drive a motor. The reason we use transistors is to take the load or the burden off of the things that are controlling things. So if we had a controller for instance, that controller cannot handle, um, let's say we have a controller here and it's a Arduino or something like that, um, our controller cannot handle the current that our motor might need. So in our particular case here, let's look at our motor. If our motor use, uh, uses uh, 9 volts and provides, uh, it uses 0.5 amps at 9 volts, then the resistance of our motor is 18 ohms, the equivalent resistance of the motor. So it's just 9 volts divided by 0.5 amps, which equals 18 ohms. If the transistor is fully on, which is what we want during uh, switching operations, we want it to be fully on or saturated, it's going to provide typically 0.2 volts, um, but we can say for practical purposes in this case since we want to use about 9 volts for V plus we can basically say that 0.2 volts is around 0 volts. So this means that if we have 9 volts at half an amp through our motor um, which is 18 ohms of resistance that the transistor will have no voltage across it all the voltage will be across the load and so the transistor will be saturated and this is going to occur when we have 0.5 amps now we need to know one more thing to solve a problem like this we need to know what our beta or HFE of the transistor is and in this particular case, if we're going to use something like a 2N2222, which is what I want to use, um, we're going to say that the beta is approximately 50. Okay, and, and this term, beta, or the DC current gain, is really your collector current over your base current. So to find our base current, we just need to take our collector current and divided by 50 which is our beta and so we'll have 500 milliamps divided by 50 which equals 10 milliamps So IB needs to be 10 milliamps. And at 10 milliamps, it will provide 500 milliamps through the transistor. The driver for transistor current is base current. So collector current will be whatever base current tells it to be. And you can take the voltage up here, the 9 volts, and change that to whatever you want. You can change that to 1 volt, 
2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts, any voltage you want, and the current, the collector current, will not change, or not change very much with a change in this voltage. So the primary thing that determines what the current is through a transistor is the collector emitter current. And in this particular case, we figured out that if our collector current was 10 milliamps, that we will control 0.5 amps. We will provide 0.5 amps in this circuit out here. So what we need to do next is we always need to provide a resistor on the input to the base because if we don't have this resistor here, then this is a short circuit. The base emitter voltage is needs 0.7 volts to turn on, roughly. It's, it's going to be anywhere around 0.6 to 0.7 volts before this junction, this base emitter junction, turns on. So we have 0.7 volts that's required to turn that junction on. So when we go to calculate what this base resistor needs to be, RB, and we know we need, we get, we're going to get 5 volts from our controller, we really need to take our 5 volts, subtract our 0.7 volts here, because we really want to know what the voltage across our resistor is, so we can calculate the value of our resistor. So, RB is equal to 5 volts in this case, minus 0.7 volts, over our current for IB, which we said was going to be 10 milliamps, or 0 0.01 amps. This turns out to be 430 ohms for RB. So this is the resistance we're going to need over here in, in order to drive have a collector emitter current of 500 milliamps over here with 10 milliamps in the base. To get this 10 milliamps we need an RB of 430 ohms if we're going to use 5 volts to drive the transistor on and off. So this is one way to solve or one thing you may have to do to solve a transistor problem, a BJT problem, is to work from the load you got to drive and work back now, as I said before, typically your saturation voltage for a transistor is going to be 0.2 volts. This is because a BJT is not a perfect switch. A perfect switch would have zero volts across it when it was on and full voltage across it when it was off. This is a very efficient way to control things, is to either turn them fully on or pull it fully off and we can use a, a method called pulse width modulation to allow us to control the speed of things using that same technique on or off. Another problem you might encounter is a situation where you know what your base current is going to be and you need to find out whether the transistor is going to be saturated or not under those conditions. So let's take a look at a problem like that. So let's look at a controller and we have a 1K resistor coming from our controller and our controller puts out 5 volts when it's on and we have a transistor here with a beta of 100 so the beta is 100 for this transistor and that's our current gain and this means that if we have 1 milliamp in the base, we're going to have 100 milliamps in the collector uh, for the collector current. Now the question is, what's going, if, if we have the same conditions for our motor, our motor is 18 ohms. The question is, in this particular situation, is the transistor saturated or not? So we know already that we, we have 0.5 volts, 0.7 volts, I'm sorry, here for the emitter base voltage. 
So our IB is going to be 5 volts minus 0.7 volts over 1,000. And this is going to give us our answer in milliamps, which is going to be 4.3 milliamps. So that's our base current. Since the beta of the transistor is 100, that means that our collector current is going to be 100 times that. So it's going to be 430 milliamps. So it's simply going to be 100 times more than what the base current is. To tell whether the transistor is saturated or not, we have to take our current times our resistance, our load resistance, and we have to find a voltage. And once we find that voltage and we find out that that voltage is almost equal to V plus, that means the transistor is saturated. If that voltage is below V plus, quite a bit below V plus, then it means the transistor is not saturated. So remember the um, the collector current is solely determined by the base current for the most part. So when we do the math here, we have 0 0.430 milliamps times 18 ohms equals V load and this equals uh, 7.74 volts. Now our original voltage here was 9 volts so 9 volts minus 7.74 is about 1.3 volts So that means that the voltage across our emitter collector is 1.3. Now that's fairly high and when you compare it to what the typical saturation voltage for a transistor is, which should be 0.2 volts. So that means our transistor is not saturated in this case. And the reason why it's not saturated here is because we use too large a base resistor and what that did was reduce our base current to the point where we could no longer saturate the transistor. The reason why we want the transistor to be saturated is because we want most of the power to be across the load and not across the transistor. Um, if we have 1.3 volts across the transistor and we have 430 milliamps we're going to have some heating of the transistor occurring. Of course the transistor will heat under any conditions but it's going to heat the less amount when the voltage across the transistor is minimal. So in this case the transistor is not saturated. Now sometimes you can do these problems and come up with a case where the voltage here is larger than 9 volts when you do the math. Now that's physically impossible so when you have a situation where the voltage across the load ends up being higher than V plus because the current here times the resistance comes up larger than 9 volts, that just means that the transistor is saturated and it can't be any more saturated than saturated. So basically all you, what you do at that point is make the determination that the transistor is saturated and that's all you can do. You're done. You can't, you can't defeat Ohm's law, you can't come up with a higher voltage across the load than you have available to it.